What's up YouTube, this is Jabber Tech. Today let's take a look at the LG V20 one year later. Should you upgrade or should you buy it in 2017? Specs of this phone are a Snapdragon 820 processor, 5.7 inch LCD panel with Corning's Gorilla Glass 4. It also has a 2.1 inch secondary screen. It has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes of internal storage with an SD card for external SD card expansion. You also have a dual lens setup with a 16 megapixel primary shooter with an f1.8 aperture, an 8 megapixel secondary wide angle camera with an aperture of 2.4. You also have Quayocom's Quick Charge 3.0. also have what LG's calling the Quad DAC for 32-bit playback. It also has a fingerprint scanner mounted on the back, as well as a removable 3200 milliamp battery. Secondary panel is really what LG was trying to shoot home with. I'm not a super fan of it. It is pretty useful. I did enjoy using it, but I didn't really find myself using it to its full potential. But you can put your name on it. You can find different contacts there. You can find different shortcuts to turn on the flashlight, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, etc. It also is really, really handy when you're watching a video or surfing the web or doing something and you don't want a notification to interrupt you, such as a text message, which just is displayed on the top and you can click on it to see what it says and quickly respond. And it just doesn't bother with whatever you're doing on the main screen. I really enjoyed that. I hope there's a way that Android can implement that without a secondary screen, maybe in some other builds of Android. The removal back is pretty simple. You just pop off the side and it gives you access to your SD card and the battery. You can change the SD cards without restarting the phone. So that's a plus for those of you who have multiple SD cards. But with 64 built in, you probably will not need to change too many SD cards. But that's really up to you guys. I don't know what you do. Well, the phone is beautiful. I really enjoy it. It's pretty fast. There's hardly any lag to it. Minimal, minimal lag. I think it's thanks to that 820 processor. On the bottom of the phone, you have your single firing speaker, USB type C connector, headphone jack. And on the top, you have the IR blaster and your microphone. Battery life has been pretty good on this phone. It's definitely a lot better than the V10, lasting from about 7 a.m. till about five with moderate usage. And with Quick Charge 3.0, there's really no need to worry about that. Half an hour charge will bring you to about 50%, so there's no worries with that at all. So let's talk about that secondary panel right now because that's what LG brought to the table with this phone and the V10. It's really convenient to have quick toggles for Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, etc. You can also add your favorite contacts list to the top. There's music controls you can do. You can add a signature if you want so that you can display your name on the top of the phone. It also acts as an always on display. So when the phone is off, it'll show you notifications and also give you access to those quick panels. It is quite dim, so I didn't find it that useful. What I did find useful, however, is the camera. And now we have to get into the camera. As far as JabberTech videos goes, you know I'm gonna give you a ton of samples and hope we can discuss it in the comments below. So check out these photo samples and video samples. Let me know what you guys think. Jabber Tech bringing another video. Today we're going to check out 4K recording with stabilization on.
We're walking normally as we usually would. Walking down the steps. Panning around. Checking the ceiling. That's 4K. Then we can switch to widescreen. Which you get a lot more in the shot. Walking around. And that's 4K, widescreen, 1080p. 1080p recording. Walking normally. Now this is 4K recording. 4K recording in Times Square. Walking normally. And then this is a 1080p video recording Times Square. is quite good. So that so that was my camera and video review. I don't have the headphones strong enough to activate the quad DAC, but with the removable back, expandable storage, wide angle camera, great build quality, excellent all around device. I think this is a win at $250 to $300. You have a beautiful big display. You have everything you need in a phone. Why are you going to go out and spend more than that if you don't have to? It earns my seal of approval in 2017. And if you buy it, I have no doubt that you're going to enjoy using this phone for the next year, even two years, maybe even more. But that's my review. Talk to you in the next one. Peace.